So yesterday I made my way over to the local metal supplier and I got enough steel to make the remainder of the parts. So like the two L pieces that I need, that go under here, and enough metal to make the risers for this. And I got a chunk of one inch aluminum. I'm not even sure how long it is. I think it's like three feet. So I'll use that to make a lot of the other random parts. But first, before I even get to that, I need to fix my plates here because the distance here, these plates are originally half inch aluminum, but because I guess dimensionally they just come out thicker than, you know, like half a millimeter to a millimeter thicker. These plates are more, it's, it's thicker than one inch, but in the CAD, I worked off of one inch. So what I'm left with is too much material. I'd rather not face this off uh, because the distance here, see if I can move it in there. So it's touching now and I need to take off a bit of material there. This is 6061 T6. And if I face off the one side, it is very likely to warp that whole thing and that could pose problems. Yeah, doing that, I, I might have to then go in and face this section off with a BK block, which is the plastic one, or yeah, it's right there, that black thing. I probably have to do the same. What I'm gonna attempt to do instead of that is make a spacer that goes underneath the rail and also this one, if necessary, out of 304 stainless steel. I have a ton of this stuff left over. Like I have, this is eight feet tall and I don't know, probably two and a half, three, three feet wide. And yeah, there's lots of this stuff, uh, 18 gauge. So th this would make a good material to make a shim out of. And uh, I, have a, I have a piece here that's a few feet long that would work pretty good. What I'm planning on doing is using my circular saw because that's how I cut all this stuff. That worked really well. Cutting it to size and then uh, milling, milling it to like the dimensions on the machine and sacrificing a six millimeter end, end mill for that. Cutting it, I'll use this blade. This is not a stainless steel cutting blade, but I found it worked just fine for cutting all of the stainless steel panels for this chip pan. And I'll see if I can get a close up of the carbide blades. They're in pretty good shape. If I, let me see if I can get to my chop saw over here and compare. This one's by Evolution and it has been cutting primarily mild steel and it's in, it's in rough shape like some some of the teeth are even missing. Let's see if I can get a, this side, maybe there's better lighting. I don't even know if that's focusing. But yeah, you get the point. I don't know if this company comes in, uh, makes blades the size of the Evolution. I think it's a 14 inch, but yeah, they work great. Uh, yeah, so rough cut the stainless steel to the you know, the rough rough size and then what I'll do is do the the hold down method of using tape and I'm gonna continue using epoxy because I have that but you could use super glue stick it onto a spoil board of some sort and then I'll just mill out the profile of the thing and and all the holes what do I got here so like I have a bunch of carbide drill bits so they should make quick work of the stainless steel Using the high speed steel ones, uh, I found, for instance, when I was doing these holes here, like they, these are frequently, that's that's how the chip pan is held in. And I must have used like five to six high speed steel drill bits, just trying to go through that stuff. Stainless steel is really tough and it just destroys anything that's not carbide. So that's uh, where I am with this. I'll uh, figure all this stuff out. What I'll do in CAD is measure down these dimensions properly this time, figure out what my offsets are to work with this material. What I'll probably do is not not mill this down to size because this should be sufficient enough to put the gap in. But then if I make an equal, you know, a spacer milled for this one, I might have to mill this surface down a little bit just so everything lines up. So I'll jump in the cat now and uh, go through that process.
I have used some calipers and measured the depth of all of these spots and it's really this is really not a not the most accurate way of doing this just because if I were to put this in here any any slight rocking back and forth like this it's gonna skew the numbers a lot but from what I can tell is these two slots that have been put in they're not at the same depth and I think that is because when I was holding down these two pieces, I used the tape method. My spoil board is probably not uh, perfectly flat because I haven't uh, faced it off in a while. Also, the, the glue and the tape and stuff will, will lift it. And found that there's a deviation of 0.15 millimeters, about 0.3. This side is deeper than this side. Compounding with the, the fact that I measured this bottom plate. This bottom plate is thinner on this side than on the top side. So what I think I'll do is keep these two plates held together and then bolt them down to the spoil board that is now flat and then just skim off the top of these. Try and get them closer to each other and that should be sufficient for what I'm doing. Right now I, I'm not sure if uh, there's any twisting action happening and I think there possibly could be. When they're bolted together and all as a single piece, milling just uh, skimming through that channel again should get them a lot more flat and on the same plane as each other. These two plates are bolted together and what I'll do is make a cam program to mill out this face and what I'll do in Linux CNC is just step it down by 0 0.05 millimeters until everything is sufficiently faced off. I'm gonna mill them all together because accuracy wise those two channels are within a tenth of a millimeter. So what I've done is made this piece and the depths of, of in here doesn't really matter because I'm gonna make the origin on this plane and then I'll be manually adjusting Z down. But I just need to get those two channels figured out. So that's where I am. This isn't SolidWorks, so what I'll do is jump into Fusion 360 and do the cam. So my origin is going to be this corner here, and I'll indicate off of that. I think that'll be a lot more accurate than going from the other side over here. So there's my origin. My stock is just going to be the exact size of all this. So I'm going to just go right from this surface. I don't care about any depths because I'm going to control that manually. I have a 2D pocket, and that's how that looks. Just going to go skimming the cross. Setting that up is just with the heights. So top and bottom heights are just the stock top, and that way it's it's not actually in in the model. It's not actually cutting anything, but it it'll it'll do what I want it to do. Another quick thing I'll mention is I'm going to use Tim Patterson's post process all script to generate this because it's only one G code file, and I don't have tool heights set up correctly. I prefer to just have everything in individual files, but in this case, there's only one up. Here is uh, out of Fusion. And here is his script. I did modify his script to remove the line numbers on this side, but then also you can see that stuff like the rapids, the G0s are brought back in. In the future, I might go in and modify the script more and make it so you have the ability to spit out multiple files, because I think that is kind of a useful feature. So I'm getting rid of the cut and I have it lined up now. I swapped out my dial indicator for a test indicator so I can Indicate off this edge here and see if I can get it in focus. There we go. So, one thing, uh, what I did was like use washers if you have them. I did in this case. Two chunks of steel and drywall screws, and then some light tapping on a chunk of wood and a hammer. And then that's basically if you tap it in. Can't really show it around the space here. But yeah, you tap it in and then uh, yeah, you just if you're gonna use drywall screws because it works pretty good in MDF, you just have to wash out because the top of them is not flat. So when you go into a hole, you have a free hole anywhere. Here's the hole here. So when it goes in, it's going to center itself and then it's going to push your work around. I just use some, some nuts as washers, put it down that way, 
Once you bolt something like this down, just check it again, make sure it's straight. So I'm going to get the edge finder out and get this location because that's my origin. And then I'm going to start skimming the surface. I glued up the surface where the rails go just so it'll be a lot easier to see on camera how much it changes. Two weeks ago I used mass precision level on the uh, Y rails to get them perfectly level. So the way I did that was to adjust it so I would get this one level. That way I wouldn't have to get my entire table level. So my table is not level but I adjust the precision level on this side so it's, it's uh, dead in, in the center and then on this side I can see the relative change in that. So there was a bit of twisting happening and well, there, and not anymore. So what I did was uh, shim the bottom here. So there's some shims under there. This one has less. And then the the two in here. So there's, there's one connection there and then in the center for this beam, minor amount of uh, shimming. This one was not shimmed and then this side was not shimmed because I'm compensating this side for that side. And the last thing I've done is touched off with a piece of paper on the far end right there. So let's run this. Okay, I went down 0.1 millimeters now, so we'll see if that takes off anything. Good, so I took off more. I think I'll go down another point one. Okay, another point one. So we should get somewhere around here now. So we're creeping uh, closer now. I might let this one run all the way just to see how it looks on this side. Looks like we made it all the way through. Thank you. 
So the milling is all done. These two channels are now nice and aligned with each other and flat. Uh, this side here, this corner, took a few more passes to get down until it was flat, but now everything is good. So the next step will be to shim it all back up with some stainless steel and I'll rough cut the stainless steel. Here's the setup to cut the stainless steel. So I marked my cut and I've also put a dab of cutting oil down on it. And uh, it's kind of sandwiched between these two pieces of uh, flat bar stock. So that's squishing it all together. And then the one in the middle, you can see there's a weight there. So what this is doing is it's stopping this top one from lifting up. Because if it lifts up, uh, it's possible that the guide on the circular saw is going to get in there. And then it's going to strip the cut. So the weight in there just keeps everything flat in the middle. And we got the cord in the front so we don't get hung up. And we're about ready to cut. So I've changed the saw to the uh, Diablo metal cutting saw. And this thing will just chew through this like nothing. So there's our strip on the floor. It's a little toasty. So we can check out the burr. So that's on the one side. So what I'm gonna do now is clean it up on the grinder. So I'm gonna use a flap disc. And I mark on my uh, flap disc with red everywhere, you can see there. So red, I know it's stainless steel, and then that that flap disc is only ever used on stainless steel. That way I don't contaminate everything. So what I'll do now is clean it all up, and we'll have a closer look at it. So after the flap wheel, this is the result. So it's all clean on both sides and this piece is quite long this is it's like three times as long as the plate so I'll chop it down this one here is uh, the uh, the width here is a little bit bigger than this one so I'll try this one first so it even fits in there even a little bit of gap On this side. Yeah, so this side doesn't go in all the way. So like my plan was to mill this stuff flat. So I really should just check and see if this is actually gonna fit and you know if the gap is good. So I'll precariously put my phone in the vise on this little ledge here. Some angle like that should look good. And then this is the wider gap so it should fit in here no problem. Yeah. So it's, it's going all the way down in. So it doesn't, it doesn't like squish or anything, like it's completely flat there. So I don't know if you can see, but yeah, it looks good to me. It looks like I got around a millimeter or so. That's great. So I'm assuming I'm going to have about the same on the other side. And what I'll do is, actually this, this is the top here. So I know that when I was facing all this, this is the shallowest corner. So this didn't, like, this one didn't have any, any taken at all. But like this corner here, that's had a lot taken off. So I'll slide this whole thing up and make sure that it looks good on that side too. And 
looks good. Might as well just check this side. And it looks good there. So what's left? Yeah, I'll just uh, cut all the stuff. And yeah, this side I'm gonna have to. I'm not even sure what I'm gonna do. I might, I might just use the grinder and just like that's gonna be the fastest way. I might just do that. So I swapped out the flap disc for a diamond cut wheel, and what I'll do is I marked out where I need to cut. So. I will cut this and then after that go back to the flap disc and clean it up. There's our new shin. Let's see if it fits. So this is the other shim that I gotta get smaller. So what I've done is I uh, marked the high spots. So on this one, the inside corners, and then this side here are the high spots. And I'll just take it over to this little grinder sander wheel and just smooth it out and recheck again. Both sides are shim now, and this one has a good amount of gap there. So what is left to do is to drill everything down, and then I'll put in the BK block here and remeasure everything. And I'll probably have to add a shim onto this to lift it up. So this video is kind of getting long now, trying to cram everything into this one single video. So I'm going to end it here, and we'll carry on with the uh, work in the next video. What that will contain is probably drilling all this stuff, possibly shimming this, and I might end that one there. Keep it shorter because I like to make a new video on the welding and just the manufacturing of these uh, L brackets. So that'll be in the future and signing off now and we'll see you in the next one.